The reason I, uh, I asked Jeff to be here is because, well, first of all, he's animal control and he's very caring and compassionate, but, and it's reducing strays and surrenders. So what is happening in a lot of cities is that animal, people are turning their animals in because of behavior issues, they don't know how to deal, them or to deal with them, they're getting ticketed by animal control, and it's a very complex thing. So what Jeff has done is work um, with the city to, uh, in a way to handle that. And it, it sounds ominous, dangerous algorithms, so really what he's trying to do is reach out to the community and help keep these animals in their homes. Could you introduce yourself? I'm sorry, I'm Amber Sitko. Um, I'm the president of All About Animals Rescue. We run a spay neuter clinic in Warren. Um, so anyway, this ordinance, and I am not joking, I talked to a lot of people around the country nationally. I've never heard of anybody doing something like this. The Sterling Heights wanted to ban pit bulls, and Jeff took it to, to new heights, and something that I've never seen done before. So. It's really impressive, and that's kind of the background. But if you want to leave, bit. I won't hold you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a copy, or will we have access to a copy? Yeah, I think they're going to put it up on the website. Okay. Yeah, and if you go to Sterling, and I'll give you my card, go to sterling-hikes.net. It's actually going to be on our website. Um, but it really had to do with, you know, keeping animals in homes, so that we didn't have owners taking dogs to the county or wherever else and saying, no, I can't, you know, I can't handle them anymore. So. What happened was, over probably like the last year, I've been really looking at all the statistics in our city and dog fights and all these different things and dog tickets and people who surrendered their animals to the county shelter and I thought, that's kind of crazy because the law was so black and white. It just seemed like, you know, your dog bit or, you, you know, something happened it was kind of like, oh, your dog went to the county. Well, I thought, well, that, that didn't really work for me. I wanted to kind of keep the dog in the home. You know, keep your animal in your house. And what could I do as the animal control officer to kind of reach out to you and give you some tools to keep your dog in your home? So what we did is probably over the last year, I really worked hard with city council, organizations, some other groups, and kind of thought, Let's, let me write an ordinance, and I'll present it to city council, and we'll reach out to the community, hold, you know, kind of like open forums and see where we can go from there. And this is what would, the result would be. It's, it kind of doesn't sound good, it's kind of sounds dangerous dog. I wish they would have really renamed it, because that's not how it works. <laughs> but it had to do a lot with the dogs and how we categorize them as behaviors, you know, medicine and stuff like that. So this ordinance is broken down into two categories. There's potentially dangerous dogs, and then there's actually dangerous dogs, which we're going to get to in a minute. So your potential dangerous dog kind of fell into four categories. You know, maybe it was menacing, it chases, it displayed threatening behaviors. Um, and then, so it's kind of like four little categories that kind of fell into, you know, it, um, it did, you know, chase, maybe it, you know, bit another dog, but it really wasn't bad. Maybe they were at a dog park, or one dog ran out of a home and chased the other dog. Didn't really do anything harmful, so is, is it really dangerous? Well, to me it wasn't. Maybe the dog needed to go to training or something like that. So what we also did was we, I don't know why, I'm left-handed, so I stay on this side. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but but um, so your dog would have fell as potentially dangerous into one of these four categories, you know, in menacing, kind of chasing dogs around. And then we were going to utilize four, or I'm sorry, nine tools that we could utilize in our ordinance. We put these four, you know, nine tools into this category that we could utilize as animal control officers. And one of them is, so here's, here's some of these things right here. Let me just make sure I can. Sorry about that. So one of the things were, if your dog was deemed to be potentially dangerous, you know, for what else, one of those four reasons that have that had taken place, we were going to have you. Maybe you need to have soft locking gates. You know, maybe the incident that took place was because. You know, DTE came and they read your meter and they left your gate open. So you had the self-closing gate and the gate locked. So you didn't have to worry. So that kind of, you know, you maybe your dog got out the garage door, you know, out the back and then ran around the side and the gates were open. Well, if you had self-locking gates, we wouldn't have to worry about that. 
So that's one thing that was implemented, you had to have self-locking gates. And your dog had to be under control, when, when the dog was off that property, it had to be in control of a capable person. You know, if you some of the incidents that took place happened with large breed dogs, you know, mastiffs, pit bulls, you know, bully the breeds or power breeds, whatever you want to call them. And they are, you know, you have a 12-year-old walking this dog. Well, is a 12-year-old able to handle a 160-pound dog? It kind of seemed like they outweighed each other. You know, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't going to work. So in the ordinance, I thought, well, let's put that in there. Let's say you have to be capable of handling the dog. So that went in there as well. Um, the other thing was the dogs had to be microchipped, which I really liked. Because a lot of times when the dogs were loose, and kind of turn into, you know, we can identify the dog, you know, I think for getting the dog back to the owner, the microchip worked out really well. So, it, again, kind of like, you know, fit to the category of getting the dog back home, you know, stop having the dogs needlessly going to the shelter. Um, one of the other things were, we kind of changed the way we do licensing. We said, we want a picture of your dog. We, you know, in fact, we want two pictures of your dog. So we can clearly make sure when you say this is Max, and we're sending you and Max to training that you're not bringing somebody else. <laughs> yeah. And the next thing we said, well, let's make sure that when you, we had a software system at the city clerk's office, that's where we do our licensing, that had contained all your pictures, your microchip numbers, all these different things that identified your dog. So when we are out on the road in the field and we catch a dog, we can scan it, the chip comes up, we call City Hall, or it comes right up in our computer and say, oh yeah, you know what that is, Max, he lives over at this, you know, over here at this address. We just take the dog right there. So it kind of worked out well. Um, the other thing was that you had to have liability insurance of $250,000. And we felt that was pretty serious because we thought, like, you know what, if you were serious about keeping your dog, and we want you to keep your dog, and you had this insurance, and actually, the cost of the insurance to have the rider wasn't that expensive. But it was kind of like a step that we could have you do. We felt like that was important. We want you to be serious about having this dog. Um, the other thing was obedience training. So we kind of looked at like the AKC, the Good Canine Citizen. There's a few other places that, um, that we worked with. Um, they had good socialization for the dog. Actually, some places went to the home, trained the owner how to train the dog. You know, so that worked out really well. Um, there's a few other items that were on here. Um, one of the, the, you know, you have to have your dog license. Obviously, that was, you know, that's a state law. <laughs> um, but there was another part of here, and that I kind of want you to see, and it's kind of controversial. But to me, I, I was for it. People might not be for it, but if you're going to see all the ordinance, then you might as well see everything. And this part of the ordinance, I don't know if you could, you know, certainly can't read it when my shadow's in there, but when I set out. <laughs> and it was kind of anyone who was convicted of a felony, whether it was violent crimes, criminal sexual conduct, anyone who was, you know, anyone who ever did animal cruelty, we actually don't allow you to have dogs in Germany. Um, but here it's going to state that your dog had to be spayed and neutered. Originally it said that you couldn't have animals. Um, that was kind of really controversial for city council, so I kind of didn't push my luck. I kind of just used this as my stepping stone, and then eventually later we could change it. Um, but that was a really big deal, and I didn't think I would ever get that through, but it was really important to me. Um, if, you were, if you were, you know, involved in domestic violence, I don't, in my own personal you know, opinion and experience, I don't know if you're probably the best person to be having dogs. We went to your house and arrested your, you for drugs, and you're running this, you know, meth lab out of your house. I don't want dogs in there. I just only think at that point bad things are going to happen. You know, so we decided that they wouldn't let me ban you from having animals, but they, I definitely, I'm going to stop anybody from spaying, you know, from breeding dogs and you know having you know bad things come out of that house. So your dogs have to be spayed and neutered. Yeah. Now these are only if your dog is classified as a potential dangerous. Yeah. They are, except for number nine. Number nine is actually an ordinance. You know, that if you are convicted of violent crimes, you know, or any of these things, you know, <coughs> not, your dogs have to be spared. Mm -hmm. You know, and if your dog is potentially dangerous, then you're, you automatically, your dog's running at large automatically, you know, we could have you spayed or 
but the, the, the difference of all of this, you know, well, I'm going to get to that in just one second. Now here, this has had to do with your dog being potentially dangerous. And then you have the right to appeal. So you can, might, might be like, well, you know what, Officer Randazza really doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> so, you know, my dog, even though, you know, it bit this other dog, I don't feel like he, he should be potentially dangerous, you know, just with a one-time incident. So you always have the right to appeal. But now we're going to step into the second part of the, the ordinance, which just says dangerous dog, which kind of is cut and dry. It's, it's not, you know, it's really easy for me to kind of understand it as far as, the first part of the ordinance is going to say, whenever your dog, you know, we ask you to, your dog's potentially dangerous. We ask you to do one of these nine things because we want your right. dog to stay in your home. So, the next question sure. that was going to be a question I said. So, you don't have to do all nine things? You don't you have to do have all to nine do things. It's up to our discretion. It's kind of like when we get there and we say, you know what? This person probably would benefit for a dog training. And since we know our dog's a runner, um, and I'll give okay. you an example. Okay. We have a husky that lives in our city. His name's Onyx. <laughs> and he gets out all the time. <laughs> he's a really friendly yeah. husky. And those of us who know huskies, they are runners. Yeah. So, you know, he, for some reason, loves to run to the senior center. <laughs> and, and when it first started happening, all the seniors were like, there's a coyote. You know, like, and I would love to call him come in. You know, we pull up and be like, Onyx, you know, get in the truck. And just run in the truck. So he's really actually a friendly dog. Is there a chance for potential danger? Well, maybe if you ran out in traffic or maybe if something happened, there's always that. As far as being, him being aggressive, I don't ever think that would happen. But is there a danger? Well, maybe. So what we said is, you have to have self-locking gates and you have to go to training with Onyx. And Onyx has to be neutered. And she was like, okay, fine. I'll do all those things. So then we go back and we say, you know what? You did do all those things. And we're really proud of you. So guess what? Your, dog, your dog's not potentially dangerous. You did all these things we asked you to do, and, and you guys can go live in harmony now. Okay. And uh, you know, hopefully, on it, we don't see any. That's just, not a good note. I was just wondering, like, wow, they have to do all nine of these things. No, that's all. That's okay. you know, kind of. We, those are tools that we could just you use, use if we okay. need them. That's what I those are one of the nine things. Okay. You could be forced to do all nine things. Right. But we kind of just put some tools in the toolbox to see where we might need some okay. of these. Okay, that's good. Thank you. But. Say we ask Onyx owner to say, you know what, we're going to have you do these three things, training, um, self-locking gates, and get them neutered. And she says, well, you know what, I'm going to do all those stuff. I go, okay, great. I come back 20 days later, and I go, you know what, you didn't get self-locking gates and you didn't take Onyx to training. Well, you know, I've been really busy. Well, we're all busy. You know? <laughs> so guess what, at that point, we have the right to impound your dog, and we'll neuter him for you. You know, we could do it one of two ways, but in this, at this point, he can easily be deemed a dangerous dog because the owners are being irresponsible. <coughs> so what we're going to do at that point is we could, you know, utilize a few tools here. But one of the things we could do is actually get the dog neutered and hold the owner responsible. Now we're going to tell the owner, we're never going to take you to court. We're, we have developed a board called OVA, which is the Ordinance Board of Appeals which a lot of people who are in code enforcement and animal control, you're gonna, you know, you'll know what OVA is. And it's the Ordinance Board of Appeals. So we're not even gonna waste time going to court. We're gonna go present our cases to OVA and say, well, what do you wanna do? We wanna keep the dog in the house, but, you know, she's so busy, she doesn't wanna go through training. What are we gonna do here? So they, they'll talk to her and say, listen, you know, you gotta, you know, do all these things or this could happen. These are, these are the other things that are gonna happen if we don't do this. Because we don't want to just go to court, because court could easily, the judge could easily say, well, then the dog's got to go. She yeah. don't want to be responsible, the dog don't want to go. So it's kind of like our final step before we do something like this. Um, and I think it's really important, because my whole goal is let's keep the dogs in their home. Because a lot of times, those of us who are animal control officers or rescues, you know, the owner sometimes might not know the best avenue to take. And maybe it takes our responsibility to say, you know what, maybe if we just go ahead and go to training, then sometimes everything's great. We never have a problem. Get the dog neutered, and then we never have problems. So that, to me, was, was a really important question for you. Sure. Let's say uh, somebody new moves into your city, and they bring with them their two pit bulls, okay. for example, and they go to the city clerk and get them licensed. Are they going to be 
uh, are they going to get a visit from animal control, nope. or are they going to automatically assume they're potentially dangerous? No. Nope. What happens here, and the reason why this ordinance, one of the things that I thought was important about this ordinance is that it's not breed specific at all, because I, I didn't want to get involved in that. I don't. I do believe all dogs have the potential to be dangerous. You know, is there a big difference between be, being a, you know mauled by a Great Dane versus twelve? Yeah, I, I'm thinking so. You know, <laughs> but, but I didn't want anything to be about breed specific because I didn't think that was the right route to go. I think that, um, and I didn't mean to get upset. You know, I'll check. But you only will see this ordinance in effect when the and when an incident has taken place. You can have four mastiffs, four pit bulls. You can register them, you will never hear from Animal Control or anybody in the city until something happens, okay? Your dog escapes your house and went after the neighbor's cat, which shouldn't have been out anyways, you know? <laughs> but you're only gonna see us when something happens. So does that help? You know, because it's not breed specific, so that's important, to, I guess I should have pointed out. Can I, before we move on to dangerous, on the insurance requirement for potentially dangerous? Yes. Are people able to get insurance once they've been identified as Potentially dangerous? Yeah, and, and the reason why, because we don't report any of that. Okay. That is something that's kept internally at animal control. And the re and that's the reason why we didn't, you know, make it kind of public for anybody. You know, it's because we don't, the whole goal is to get off the list. Right. And you yeah. can get off the list. You know, once you're on the list for a potentially dangerous dog, you can get off the list. You can do whatever we ask you to do. One of those nine tools that we put in place. Training, neutering, you know, whatever it's going to be, you can get off the list and then we're done with you. Then we'll never talk to you again until and hopefully, you know, another incident doesn't happen. But this is off topic, you, but you said cat, but the cat shouldn't have been out anyway. What is the, what is your policy with cats? Well, there's the state law that says your animals have to stay on your property. So your, your cat can go out, sure. I don't know how, you know, I know there's a lot of cat people, and I'm not one of them, but I can tell you that. I don't know how to keep your cat on your property, no, unless you have a leash or something. I didn't know that was a state law. No. Yeah. It's so, state so, law. So, so do you go out. talk to the cat owner, or do you Absolutely. tell the cat owner that it's their responsibility? Absolutely. And it's, I had a dog, you know, in its own yard, and unfortunately, you know, the cat got into it, and they kind of scoffed it. Nobody was really hurt. But, the, you know, you can't come... You know, crying when you're at fault, you're being irresponsible. You're letting your cat run. So that's, that's irresponsible. Oh, on the insurance. Some insurance companies will drop you if you have certain breeds. That's true. You know, we found out when we were doing the research that a lot of people who had, um, say, the bully breeds, um, and even like some, you know, as long as there was never a bite, they would cover you. But once there was a bite, then they could drop you. So what, usually there was no breed specific part of it until an incident occurred. And then they said, okay, well if you have, a, you know, you had a Rottweiler even, they were like, you know, we're going to drop your insurance. That, right, but right. It, well, from the research we did, it, it took an incident to happen. Right. And that's why I think the ordinance is, is important because... because some insurance companies actually ask what kind of yeah. dog you have. Right. They, right. they ask you, you know, up front before anything even happens. If you have a dog, I won't breed you have. Right, and I think it would, you know, it probably would look really good into your insurance company. We said, well, you know what, my dog went through the AKC Good Canine Citizen Program. You know, or another, you know, recognized program. I think that would really show them, you know what, well, they seem responsible, the dog's licensed, it's sterilized, and it went through training. So, you know, I think that you kind of, trying to be ahead of the game, I think, is the most important part. All right. And then, um, there's one part of the dangerous dog, you know, so this is kind of, your dog did serious injury. You know, either killed another animal, it viciously attacked a person, you're falling into the dangerous dog category. You know, and then that was kind of really, you know, at that point, it's kind of one of these things of what, you know, what are we going to do? Now? <coughs> you know, we look at, and we look at each case as an individual case. I just, I just thought I'd say this. I had a golden retriever rescue. Mm -hmm. Jumped through my front door. I'd only had him a month. This is a puppy, basically. Runs across the street, terrorizes my neighbor's grandchild. They would have said that was a dangerous dog. 
Now this is a golden retriever that was, hi, hi, yeah. oh, I'm so happy to see you. But their, but their <laughs> two little children started, you know, they were, and of course the way the mother handled it, screaming right. and yelling well, at them. But, um, you know. But I think that at that point we have to rely on the police department and the experience of the animal people and say, you know, what, you know, what really happened? You know, and here's a good example. Two weeks ago I was called out for, you know, 911 call, a person being attacked by a dog. I ran out there and it was probably a two month old, you know, German Shepherd dog. And I'm like, where, I'm like, where's the dog? Where's the dog? And I'm like, really? And I'm like, wow. And I pick the dog up and I'm like, In the ordinance, it even states that animal control and the law enforcement agency has the right to use their own discretion. Because, again, not every dog incident is aggressive. It's not dangerous. It's not, you know, at that case, I've been like, listen, you know, you're going to have to take this dog to training. You know, he's really cute, but he's going to be big, so let's get him in the training. You know, and then they're satisfied because they're like, oh, you know, animal control went over there and they talked to him and everything's been dealt with. Right, but I mean, you know, in the eyes of those parents, and, and understanding the terror that their five-year-old uh, experienced, they would have said, that's a dangerous dog. Right. And we get that all the time. emotionally, you know, they felt it was going to damage right. their... And what's important is now we got to teach that those children <laughs> to go interact with that same dog. Well, and that, of course would be the appropriate thing to do in that freak out. It's just right. like, oh, he's just friendly. Yeah. Right. And that's why at Sterling Heights, again, we're gonna we also have classes for people and the you know, dogs. Because you know, we have to go out to the schools and talk to you know, how do you approach a free dog? You can't you know, don't don't just run up. You know, I mean if a dog charged you, what do you do? You know? So the, you know, and there's another important part of this ordinance that I had put in there. And it had to do with, you know, is a, danger, is a dog dangerous if you go over to the dog and you're causing to the dog and then the dog attacks you? No. I don't think so. No, we had an incident take place, um, domestic violence incident between husband and wife, and so the husband thought, I'll get back at her, and he does terrible things to the dog. Well, the dog got him. Yeah. You know, and I thought, you know, let's give the dog a steak. At that point. <laughs> <laughs> that was really bad. So we had to make sure you know, but he actually calls 911 and says, you know, my dog attacked me. So when we get there, you know, the dog is freaking out, but not at us, just scared of what just took place. So then the more we looked into it, we're like, no, you, you deserve that. So. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, do, I do want you to know, it's not just about, you know, we did try to take every avenue we can to protect the, the dog. You know, we, you know, I've been in the field for a very long time. To me, you know, we had to do things to protect the dog, and our goal is to keep the dogs in the home. I mean, that really is kind of the basis, and I'm going to try to pick it up here. And there's one part of the ordinance that I thought was really important, um, and I want to get to it because I know I'm kind of pressed for time here. But um, I know it might, for some people, be not good, but I'm willing to take the abuse. <laughs> Um, and for me, in my experience, and those of us, you know, that kind of look at the bully breeds, I think of all the animals that I've ever seen <clears throat> tied outside and chained to a pole or a tree, you, it breaks my heart because I don't sleep at night over it because it was a really big deal to me because I think, it's, to me, it's animal cruelty, it's animal abuse, it, you know, yeah. your dog's outside. But what we did is statistically look at all the attacks that happened in our city and all the runs that were taken for dogs at large, you know, people who are giving up their dog, you know, because I can't control the dog anymore, he's just unruly. Well, he's probably really unsocialized because you haven't changed the tree. You know, he's guarding the tree. So we said, no more outside dogs. You cannot have outside dogs oh. in our city. Oh. And so what we did is we had to talk to like hunting groups, and different organizations that did have, you know, a lot of those, and I'm not pointing fingers, but I'm just saying a lot of people, what we ran into, said, you know, hey, well, I have hunting dogs. You know, I have, you know, German short hairs, and they're hunting dogs, and that's where they live, they live outside. Well, we talked to the organization, and they were like, no, we don't promote outside dogs. And I said, okay, great, because we're going to pass an ordinance that says you can't anyway, so <laughs> that's what we're here to for. Because yeah. to me, we would, you know, we would go out to a barking complaint. You have three German short-haired dogs, 
you know, in the backyard. Or, most, like I said, most of our attacks happened because the dog escaped the yard. And those dogs, I don't think under their normal circumstances would have been aggressive, but they were left kind of to their own demise. So what happened was, you get a guy riding down 60 Mile, as you probably all read in the paper, and he gets to 60 Mile and four pit bulls escape a yard and start attacking him. Well, I think if we would have caught that sooner, because there was a chance that we were already out there, and we could have said, well, wait a minute here, we've got four big dogs living with these people, and I'm not sure all their marbles are in their box, so <laughs> what can I do as the animal control to prevent something from happening? Well, I can say, let's do this. We're not going to put your dog as potentially dangerous, but we got a, some sort of a situation that we know, given the right scenario, it could really turn ugly. Let's have them go to training, get the dogs neutered or spayed, whatever it's going to be, and then maybe we prevent, we would could have prevented it. Well, we didn't have the tools yet, so we had to do something. Because unfortunately, those dogs, I don't necessarily know if they were all aggressive, because I think one, it takes one of those four to get the ball going, and then the other three are like, sure, I'll, you know, I'll jump on them too. <laughs> it's kind of like this, I think that's how it kind of went. And then here, the guy, you know, people on six mile are like, yep, four dogs on a person, he's being mauled. You know, 13, 13 calls came into 911 in less than a minute, you know, a minute in that whole incident. All four dogs lost their life. So to me, I thought, we, this just can't be like this. You know, and what, a month later in the paper, you read about the lady on her front lawn with her two dogs, the neighbor's two pit bulls escape his yard, get a hole in the fence, they escape his yard, go over, and they start going after her dog, so he, she hits the dog, and then the dogs turn on her. Again, you know, if we, I think if we would have had the ordinance, because we looked, we had animal control been out there before, yeah, they were out there because he didn't have his license, and at that time, had we had the ordinance, we could have said, you know what, we're going to use one of our nine tools, mm -hmm. or all nine of them, whatever, three of the nine, you know, to prevent this from ever happening again. So it took a long, you know, it took, you know, a year and a half, almost two, two years to get all the data, you know, take the beating from city council. <laughs> but in all in all, they were really on board. The, the chief of police was on board, our chief captain, you know, my sergeant was on board, and then the city council was on board. So it, it, everyone together thought, you know what, you're right, we've got to be proactive and not reactive. And I think that was the whole basis of the ordinance. Mm -hmm. sure. How do you determine when a dog is an outside dog versus a dog that's put when, out when you go, When you leave the house, bring the dog in. <laughs> that's the ordinance. When you leave, you so leave to go to work. Invisible fence is a definite no now. No. You can have invisible fence in the city of Sterling mm -hmm. Heights. You have to have it posted that you have an invisible fence. Yeah. And your fence can't come three feet to the sidewalk. Uh, you're, you're pretty much in a city then. You don't have rural areas. No, it's certainly high. It's, it's, it's a city. Yeah, it's a city. I think it's a No, we don't have farmers. <laughs> okay. no, it's not rural. It's, a, it's definitely a city. It's like right next, just north of Warren. Yeah. If that helps. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I mean, it's a city. Just like this is. Like a city. I mean, it's the same. It's the fourth biggest city in the state. Yeah.